Say it with me, guys. Bad hair day. Do you guys want to know another secret? When I sat down to start recording this video, my shirt was on backwards. I'm a degreed human being, if you can believe that. Hi guys, this is Desiree, and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing Room Hate by Penelope Ward. So I am already a really big fan of Penelope Ward's writing. If you guys haven't already seen it, I do have a review for Step Brother Dearest. I can link it down in, below in the description. That was sort of my gateway book into the world that is Penelope Ward. And um, ever since reading this one, uh, I'm kind of hooked. And I went on a binge and I just bought like a ton of her books at once. I don't know if I'm going to read them all at once. So Penelope Ward is one of my favorite authors. You guys know Stepbrother Dearest has a place of pride on my bookshelf and has cemented itself as one of my top favorite reads of all time. And this book is definitely no different. So as per usual, we are going to start off with a non-spoiler section and then with warning, I will move on to a spoiler section. And for those of you who have not read this book yet and do not like spoilers, please stop this video at the end of the non-spoiler section. And then when you have read it, join me again in the spoiler section and we shall discuss. So this book is very, very new. It just came out yesterday. I am filming on the 16th, so it came out on the 15th and I read this in almost one sitting. As much of a one sitting as I could have while simultaneously watching my nine-month-old son, which, I mean, it's a feat in itself that I just managed to finish it in one day. It only stands testament as to how great this book was. I was at the precipice of being in a book rut, and what happens in my book ruts is I am not really intrigued by the new releases that have come out, or all of the new releases that I've recently read are just kind of... They range from like okay to really good, but there's nothing that's really wowing me. And I kind of start to get into a funk and I notice that the books are kind of bleeding into one another and I'm sort of going into a new novel thinking, oh, it's just kind of going to be okay, it's kind of going to be good, based off of my reactions and my opinions on other books. So they kind of start to bleed together and that's definitely not what you want. So when I get into one of my book ruts, that's usually how it starts, and I usually stop reading new releases altogether. I still purchase them, but they'll just sit on my Kindle for a few weeks until I kind of get the urge back to start going in and rereading them. So I go back to all of my favorites. So I'll start reading The Hookup, um, Step Brother Dearest was one of those novels for me that I just went back to and read when I was um, on one of my little book ruts. and. It sort of helps me clear my head, it's like a cleansing almost, and then when I jump back into new releases, I can be really excited about them again, and um, not kind of go into them with a sort of blasé um, attitude. So I don't know if that made any sense, but all of that babbling was just to point out that this book brought me out of a potential book rut. I was like right on the cusp of just falling and going, fuck it, I'm just going to read all of my favorite books. There is nothing right now that's really, really doing it for me. To tell you the truth, a lot of that had to do with my disappointment with Beautiful Burn, but this book brought me back to life. It was so, so good and so unexpected. I don't have enough good things to say about it, I just don't. So this book revolves around Justin Banks and Amelia Payne. They were childhood friends and Justin kind of got taken under Amelia's Nana's wing. Um, his parents were really, really busy with work and his mom was always away on business trips. So he didn't really have much of an upbringing from his parents. So Amelia's grandmother kind of did it for him. And because of Amelia's grandmother watching him so often, they became really, really close friends. So Amelia and Justin became inseparable and they did things like going to indie movies together and he played guitar and wrote songs for her. Really, really cute songs and they had great connection in their childhood. Like It was so realistic to me the way their childhood was painted and uh, the imagery was just wonderful and it was such a genuine connection all the way from their childhood into their adulthood. And there were so many things that were really funny and really sweet that Justin did for Amelia. They had a falling out 
We're in the non-spoiler section here, so I'm not going to say what. There was a little bit of a secret that had been let loose, and it caused Amelia to run away and live with her father. So here we are nine years later after Amelia left to go live with her father. So she is now 24. She left when she was 15 and her Nana has unfortunately passed away. Now, Amelia's grandmother has left both she and Justin 50-50 ownership in this beach house that she had once owned. And now the story begins. So Amelia's reunion with Justin is mm, hostile, to say the least. Justin is none too happy about having to share this house with Amelia. So this house is the last connection between Amelia's grandmother and Justin and Amelia. So neither one of them are willing to sever that connection. So they both go to the house at the same time and Justin now has a girlfriend. And the story just sort of falls into place from there and that's where everything starts off. The banter between these two is so genuine and so fantastic. So this whole novel revolves around two childhood friends who deeply, deeply care for one another, going through the trials and the tribulations, and I'm gonna wax poetic here, um, throughout their reunion. Given the synopsis of the book itself, and then given what I just told you, it's easy to go, oh, well, yeah, they'll just they'll share the cottage for the summer, and then they'll realize that they're still in love, and blah, blah, blah. no, 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 no. This book took so many unexpected twists and turns, yet it wasn't confusing and it wasn't at excess. Every single plot twist in this book was very, very strategic. None of it was over the top or unbelievable. It kept me hooked the entire time because every time I sat down and I kept reading through the story and I thought, alright, I know for sure where it's gonna go from here. It totally flipped over and went somewhere entirely different and I was sucked into the book all over again. And it was exactly what I needed and exactly what I wanted in a book. It was just amazing. It, so I think the word for this book is just unexpected. It was such an unexpected surprise. It was a pleasant surprise to, to read. And um, I ordered a signed copy of this book just yesterday. So. Um, Alright guys, so I'm going to stop the non-spoiler section here. I realize that this book just came out yesterday, so chances are not a whole lot of you have read this book. Go read this book right now, and then right after you should go ahead and read Step Brother Dearest if you haven't read that book yet. Alright guys, check back with me in the spoiler section when you have read it. See you later. Penelope Ward has a great gift with love-hate relationships. There's something about Penelope Ward's writing, how she develops these characters and how she manages to, de to develop the relationship at the same time and go from total hatred to a genuine connection that you just feel down to your bones. That is ridiculously hard to pull off. So it, there's something about that buildup where it goes from total hostility from Justin in the beginning towards gradually reconciliation between two friends, not insta-love, which you guys know, at least I hope you know by now, that I absolutely hate in novels. I hate insta-love novels where there's no connection between the two characters except the fact that they're really physically attracted to one another. But they don't go from not seeing each other for almost 10 years to instantly being back in love. They go from not seeing each other in 10 years and having kind of a lot of strings unattached and there's a lot of broken threads there and they go into this mending stage where they're learning how to be friends again and they're learning how to talk to each other again and then it builds up from there and it was very realistic and just beautifully done. The other thing that Penelope Ward has a really great gift with is not making me hate the male protagonist's girlfriend. I couldn't hate Jade! I empathize with her, especially at the end where she goes up to Justin while he's still on tour and says, so you can take care of her kid, but not mine? Like you want hers, but you don't want mine? This one isn't even biologically yours. And the way it was explained was so beautiful. It was that B chose Justin. He didn't expect, you know, B to enter his life and, or Amelia for that matter ever again until that house situation happened. Um, and just steal his heart. That, that's not something you can ever expect. 
but I understand how Jade would be insulted. I would feel so insulted if that were me. If I put all this time and energy into a relationship, and that was the one thing that was really tearing us apart was the fact that he didn't want to have kids and I did, that would be a big deal. That would bother me too if I were in Jade's position. So I really empathized with her and I couldn't hate her. I couldn't even hate Olivia and I was really <laughs> revving to go and like, alright, here's a bitch, I can really hate her. And I didn't. The most unexpected thing in this book for me was when Amelia got pregnant. I didn't see that coming at all. It changed the entire story because up until that point I thought, alright, I know this where this book is gonna go. It's probably just gonna be the run of the mill, they eventually get closer, he's gonna leave Jade, yada yada yada, and then Amelia ends up pregnant with Adam's child. <laughs> Mind blown. I was like, Alright, I am in this story for the long haul. I am going to finish this story right now. I'm going to finish it today if it kills me. There are very few novels that I read in which there is a single mother or just parenthood in general. Usually it's an afterthought or, you know, having a baby is an accident, which it was in this case, but it's usually not so early on and it's not usually a focal point in a story in this case. It's usually in like an epilogue circumstance where you know, it's like the third book of a trilogy, the the female protagonist ends up pregnant and it's unexpected, and then at the very end it shows this epilogue where either the baby's being born or the baby's like a year too old. That's how it usually goes. I haven't read about, I haven't read a book where, and how Justin was with B, I mean, oh my god, can your ovaries explode anymore as a female? No, I don't think they can. Oh, he was so sweet with her and so funny. I loved when Amelia finally got dressed up to go out to Sandy's and watch Justin play. And the baby was crying and everybody was turning around and looking at her and she was so nervous and Justin just took hold of it like that. And they were they were so touching and so funny all at the same time. And it was such a great way to watch two characters really develop a connection past what they had during childhood. So it shows the immense character growth that they had. A new relationship blossoms out of it. True evolution of a relationship. It, it just sucked me in. Overall this book for me was really realistic. I related so much to Amelia. Not in the sense that she was a single mother, but as a mother I feel like there's this sense of camaraderie. I would lean my head on my hand as I was reading these scenes and just go, I feel you, Amelia. I so understand what you're going through right now. I was there just not long in the distant past ago. I understand. There wasn't a whole lot of smut in this novel either. It was very well balanced. It kind of gets a little unrealistic when every other chapter or every other page is just a sex scene. It's like, when can we just get to the connection between these two characters? And with this book, with Room Hate, there was only little dashes of smut in there, just, you know, lightly peppered in. Those scenes were really great, don't get me wrong, like, she made it count with these few scenes that, um, she put in there. Not to say that there wasn't tension throughout the whole novel, there was absolute, you know, sexual tension. Because there wasn't a whole lot of smut, it allowed you to really focus on the relationship between Justin and Amelia, and only that. The connection felt so real and honest, and when those scenes did come up, those smutty scenes come up, I only felt that connection even more. It felt more real to me. That epilogue was the most epic epilogue, hello alliteration, I have ever read. It was so perfect and sweet and heartwarming. I loved that Justin found that picture of he and Amelia sitting on, I think it was the front porch, and he was playing guitar, and she had his head rest, she had her head resting on his shoulder, and underneath the Nana had written, you know, this was how it's supposed to be, or how it's supposed to be. And then, as if it couldn't get any more perfect, he writes in an A after B-E in the word B to make his nickname for Beatrice, their daughter. Oh, oh my god, can you swoon anymore over this book? I don't think you can. I can't. It's, oh, it was so good. So let me know what you guys think. I am so excited. I'm so revved up and happy that I'm out of this book rut. This is my new top favorite of 2016 so far. It is phenomenal. 
and I really want to know your guys' opinions, so please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you aren't already subscribed to see some more videos from me, and I will see you guys later. Bye!